Welcome to the Meet Me at the Creek podcast with Pastor James Jeffrey. Meet Me at the Creek is a ministry of Mud Creek Baptist Church in Stevenson, Alabama, where Pastor James shares sermons and covers various topics and talking points. Feeling a bit left out? Don't. Pastor James encourages subscriber participation. Email your questions, ideas, or recommendations to James Jeffrey Jr. at iCloud.com. Thank you for meeting us at the Creek. Now, here's Pastor James. Psalm 61, verse number 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. And he shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day, the hour, the opportunity to stand. Bless your word. Bless the message. Anoint us from on high with power and authority to preach from the very throne room of grace and of heaven today. God, speak to us from the place where you're seated. Speak to our hearts. Hide me in the shadow of the cross. Move me out of the way and speak through this vessel, Lord, I do pray this morning. Uh, Give us those words that we need Uh, Father, today and tomorrow and the days to come and the years that may lay ahead. uh, Father, whatever, Lord, is that we're facing that we can't see, prepare our hearts, God, uh, to receive that now, Lord, that will help us to sustain uh, in the days where we're walking through hard times and we get overwhelmed. Speak to hearts and lives right now. Draw the lost to repentance and the wayward back to yourself. Make a difference, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing this morning. I find it amazing that uh, how, how much that a man that God said in David, the man that God said was after his own heart, uh, he struggled so much during his lifetime. David, a man of war. You know, they said about Saul. They said, Saul has killed his thousands, and David is tens of thousands. Saul ain't nowhere near of the king that David is. Saul was nowhere near the warrior that David was. David went down, <coughs> excuse me, in history as being the, the man who God said uh, was the apple of his eye. I'm amazed at David's attitude. Psalm after psalm after psalm. Hardship after hardship after hardship. And every time you turn around, David, a man that turned his life and his service around. Uh, Some people this morning, I know me, I I can only speak for me really, but I think I speak for uh, for the vast multitudes when I say some of the things I say. Some people this morning would say something similar to this. Well, if if God was really for me, this wouldn't befall me. Just this morning, you can ask Austin, he'd be my witness. Just this morning, I couldn't get nothing to work right. I was having to call my wife to bring adapters and try this and try that. And I, I just I got off the phone and I said, I don't know why the Lord sees fit to torture me on Sunday morning. Everything will go right until I need it to go right. And then it all goes wrong. And I mean, I'm stressing and I'm worrying. And yesterday... I think somebody said yesterday made mention of how stressed they were about something that was coming up. And I'm sitting over here thinking, I can't believe you're worried about that. What if you had all the things to worry about that I got to worry about? But I didn't say that out loud. What I came, what I said with, or what I actually said was, it'd be all right. It'd be all right. 24 hours later, I should have been telling myself, it'd be all right. It'd be all right. But I don't say that. Some of us sometimes will say, if this is all I'm going to get for serving the Lord, I might as well just quit. 
You ever said that to yourself? You ain't got a yank, no show of hands. Don't raise your hand. Don't even nod at me, Lord. Don't, matter of fact, just don't even look at me. Let me take my glasses off. Because we've all, at least in our hearts, made that kind of statement before. Whether we want to admit it or not, we're subject to do that. David had a love for God like I'd never seen. But David had a love for himself that I can identify with. Because every time David loved himself, he fell out of love with God just a little bit. And the only way out of it was to fall out of love with himself and fall back in love with God. And that is you and I this morning. And when we're overwhelmed in life, here is the reality. When, it's, when, we're all, we're, when we're so overwhelmed, what we're thinking about is us. I'm thinking about me. When I get overwhelmed, my focus is inward. When you get overwhelmed, your focus, and let's just be honest, it's inward. That is the most selfish that we'll ever be. When things are going wrong, we always default to me. Every single time. And that's when this feeling, this overwhelming fear, this guilt, this shame, all these things that accompany doubt and this fear of overwhelming that's when it all begins to pile on there's a little chorus i was listening to a ct and becky townsend cd the other day and i don't know which one of their youngins sang it but it was it, they were a little baby when they sang it and it said i love you lord i love you lord because you first loved me i love you lord you purchased my salvation on calvary's tree but here's what i sing sometimes and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just stupid enough to tell you what I say sometimes. Because this is me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, because you've been so good to me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, because you've sheltered me from my enemy. We equate good things with God's provision and love. We equate things going right with God's love for us. And friend, let me tell you something this morning. There are times... When, when this is true, when God is looking out for us and things are going right and there's money in the bank and there's food in the pantry and the, and the fridge full and the gas tank's full and life's full and life's good, but there's more times than not that everything ain't just hunky-dory. And that's just our lives that we got to deal with. David was a man that God said is after my very heart. But he's also a, God, a man that God said... He can't build my temple because he's got too much blood on his hands. David had to learn through trial and error, through victory and failure, or as some of our little members have said this week, through history and failure. Amen. That's so cute, by the way. If you ain't seen the video, you're watching. Victory and failure. Victory and failure. Success and defeat. Confidence and discouragement. They all seem to work together for us and against us. And it's always rooted in the same thing. Right here. It can all be traced back to me. We blame ourselves for weak moments. We blame ourselves for burdensome times. We're harder on ourselves than God is. I don't know about you, but when I mess up, I am the hardest person to convince that there's forgiveness for me. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you've done something or said something or acted in a certain way that you knew wasn't right and you know still ain't right. And nobody else is, no, and maybe a few other people knew about it. They're not even looking at you with a stank eye. The only person looking at you with a stank eye is yourself. I, I, that's what I do. That's how I know y'all do it, because I do it. I look myself in the mirror every single day, and I remind myself of every place that I messed up the day before. And I can't forget or let go of some of the things that I did 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. And I know there's some people out there that do the same thing about me. And I, I don't have time really to worry about, uh, you know, the things that are under the blood, but I still 
find myself beating myself up over yesteryear and yesterday and things that should be past and gone. And I got news for you. It's only when those moments where I find enough courage to get out of God's way and let the Lord have his way in my heart and life that I really finally experience victory over some of those things. David was harder on himself than God was. You know who made us that way? God did. God knew we'd be harder on ourselves than everybody else. God knew that we were going to need grace and forgiveness. But I can't blame God. I blame this flesh. I blame this sin nature. It's what I have to deal with and contend with every day that makes life so hard for me. And that's the guy looking back in the mirror. You've got to let God fix that man or that woman, that person, that heart. It has to start right there. A lot of us want to see things. We want to see revival. We want to see a great move of God. We want to see people get help. We want to be influential. We want to share quotes, and we want to be inspirational, and we want folks to pay attention to what we got to say. Here's the problem. We're not even listening to ourselves. You know what I do every morning? You know what the first thing I do every morning is? And I bet some of y'all do it too. First thing I do every single morning is the one thing that I, that I swear up and down all day long I'm not going to do the next thing. I ain't going to hit the snooze button. And I hit it every day. My wife thinks that I hit it just so it can go off again and I can wake her up. <laughs> That's actually not it. I'm struggling to wake up myself. The reality is if I just go and get up, my day will probably go a whole lot better from that moment on. But I'll hit the snooze button. And then I'll gripe for the next hour and a half to two hours because my mind and my brain and my body went back into sleep cycle. And I'm having to fight through the grogginess. Craig Edwards said it like this. We're the only generation of people that gripe because we have to take something to help us get up in the morning. And we gripe because we have to take something to help us go down at night. And we gripe all day long because we had to take something to get up and we're going to have to take something to go down. We gripe about everything. Nothing is satisfactory. Nothing is enough. Just getting up and being happy to be alive doesn't seem like it's enough for us anymore. And I'm guilty this morning. I do the same kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, that's what leads to us being overwhelmed. It's already strike one on the board. The devil's one and I'm none. Amen? And if I just shift that to, to the other side, the Lord is undefeated in that category. My problem is I'm looking at everything all wrong. And I do it over and over and over again. David, in the very first verse, hear my cry, O God. First thing we need to do, amen, to, to, to do what, to, to get out of this feeling is number one, get to the Lord. Amen. We don't need, we don't need another self-help book. We got all the self-help we really need. I'm not against them. They got a lot to offer. But I'm telling you, the very first way out of trouble and the only sure way out of trouble is through Jesus. Hear my cry, O oh God. Stop crying, belly aching to everybody else so nobody want to hear it anyway and go cry to the Lord about it. And I promise you, when you start to do that, other things will start to fade away. Mark 14, that it came to pass, they was in a place which was named Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and, and, and they began to be so amazed and, and to be very, and their hearts were very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went a little forward, a little farther, and he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible that the hour might pass from him. Even the Lord, as, as a fully 100% human, on that side of him, even Jesus prayed for the cup to pass from him. Nobody, nobody that I know wants to go through great troubles and trials. But everybody that's in this room today, if you ain't experienced it, you will. Hard times are coming. For many of us, hard times have already arrived. Some have left and came back for more. They don't go away forever. Hard times keep, continue to come. In his humanity, even Jesus prayed to be relieved of what overwhelmed him. 
in his sin, Peter was overwhelmed. Matthew 26. Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him before the, croc, the cock crows, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And, and he went out and wept bitterly. Don't think because you're at this place or you're that place or you do this or you do that that you won't fall victim to getting so overwhelmed that you'll fall. Your testimony sometimes will suffer because you thought too high and mighty of yourself. Listen, I'm telling you something now. You, you can hear anything you want to hear. Hear this. Don't look around the room and point fingers at everybody else. And don't pick out everybody else's kids and point fingers at their kids and say, well, mine won't never do that. And I'm telling you, I'm here to, it will come to your house. Be very careful of what you do and how judgmental you are toward others or you're going to have to deal with it yourself. In his circumstances, the Apostle Paul was even overwhelmed. 2 Corinthians 1.8 we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. There will be times in your life that things will get so hard that you'll wish you were dead. If you ain't got there, thank God for it today. You're to lift up a holy hand and shout the victory that you never had that come to your life because I promise you there ain't much worse than that feeling. And you need only to read the newspaper and watch the news and listen to the obituaries to find out that suicide in our country, in Western civilization, is at an all-time high because people get to this place. It's real, it's facts, and there ain't no getting around it. And the worst thing that the church can do is, act, is run hide in the corner and act like it's not a thing. Satan is after souls. He always has been. He always will be, and he'll overwhelm you to the point that you will despair of your life. You'll wish you were dead, and you'll start looking for a way out, thinking that that's the way out. And that is not the way out, friend. That is not the way you want to go out and face the Lord in eternity. Amen. Paul, in circumstances, was overwhelmed. And in his humanity, the Lord, knowing what it felt like, he knows how we feel. Hebrews 4, verse 15, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like unto we, yet without sin. God knows, three things. God knows that we are not omniscient. You understand that? God knows, the, God knows everything about you. But remind yourself these three things every single day. Because this is who God is and it's who we ain't. And God knows who he is and he knows who we ain't. And we better learn who he is and who we ain't. God knows and we need to know that we're not omniscient. Contrary to popular opinion, I do not know everything. I know some of y'all thought that. You done got to them, ain't you? You told them all I didn't know nothing. We are not omniscient. You are not omniscient. We don't know what tomorrow holds. The only thing we know is who holds tomorrow. We don't know what lies around the corner. We just know who's going to be waiting for us when we get there. Amen. God knows that we're not omnipotent. Even if I did know what was coming tomorrow, I don't have the power to change it. Even if I did know that I was going to get diagnosed with cancer 20 years from now, there ain't nothing I can do about it. I could change my diet. I could... I could move to Mexico, get on one of them alcoholic diets, and, and man, do everything the right way at the right time, at the right moments to stop it. And if it's the will of God, guess what's going to happen? It's still the will of God. It's still going to happen. And ain't nothing. I'm not telling you not to be healthy. I'm trying to do it myself. I'm just telling you that even if I know what's coming, it does not mean I can stop it. It gives me a greater advantage. It'll help me prepare better. So even if, I, even if I go down in the fight, I can go down swinging. At least I had a chance. But I am not omnipotent. And we do not have the power to overcome all things. Not on our own. Because all we are is fallen, fleshly creatures. But with the Creator working in us, through us, for us, and against our enemies, we have the power to overcome all things. Matter of fact, we can overcome, the Bible said in Revelation, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. And in case you don't know, that's eternal. That's, that's an eternal promise that he made to us. That don't mean that you're going to get through everything in this earth, but that means that you're going to get through everything for eternity. And when you measure life eternally, 
We're, this is just a drop. This ain't even a drop in the bucket. This is a drop in the medicine cup of life and in, in the eternal scope of things. Third thing is God knows, amen, that we're not omniscient. God knows, and we're not omnipotent. God knows that we're not omnipresent. We can't be everywhere at once. Have mercy in the ministry. This has been my experience over and over and over. And you wonder why what causes ministry burnout? You wonder why preachers don't want pastor churches no more? Let me just tell you. Because we can't be everything to everybody and everywhere at every time. And there ain't no, for us, failing people for us is the same as failing God. Something happens in your life and I can't be there. Nobody feels worse about it than me. I promise you that. When I have to tell you I can't come, nobody takes that harder than I do. Nobody, I promise you. You may take it hard, but I promise you, long term, you may get over it. You might not never get over it, but you will move on. 20 years from now, when I see you in the grocery store, guess what I'm going to think about? I'm going to think about the time that I failed you. And you know how I know I'll do that? When my mother, when my, I've told this story before, but for those of you who don't know it, I'm going to retell it. When my mother died, my wife's sitting here. She can testify to this. I found a little a notebook that she had kept. Been keeping it for years. And it was full of stuff. My son loves me so much. My son's so good to me. My son did this. My son did that. I'm so happy. My son, my son, my son. But the Valentine's Day... After my great-grandmother passed away, I forgot to call my mama. I forgot to go by and see her. And she wrote in that journal, Valentine's Day, spent the day alone. Nobody called and nobody came by. And it tortures me to the day. I wish I'd have never seen it. I'd have sacrificed all the good things that I saw to not have to see that one thing. Don't think for a minute that, 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 that failing people does not affect us. The look in your faces. Son-in-law told me one time, he said, I would rather you walk up and punch me in the mouth is to tell me you're disappointed in me. I'm going to spare you that. I ain't never been disappointed in you. I've been mad at you a few times. <laughs> one of the boosts. I got a great son-in-law. The Lord blessed my family richly, continues to bless my family richly. And even in the midst of hardships and sorrows and troubles and trials, God's still good to us. And it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say or has to think, God's still been good to me. BJ, the Lord touches and does things in my life that I would have never dreamed it did 30 years ago. And here I am living a life that I never imagined I could have, doing something that I never imagined that I could do. I didn't have I didn't have enough courage to stand up in front of the class. I'd take a zero on oral report day. I could not stand it. And here I am, Lord, calling out of the blue. Why me? That was my question. Why me? And my response was, absolutely not. I had the same response right out here in the median a few years back. No, I ain't doing it. Well, here I am doing exactly what he told me to do, exactly the way that he tells me to do it. That's the way you get out of things. You can't be omnipresent, but I tell you what you can be. You can be available as often as possible. And the best ability in any, in any facet of your life, the best ability is availability. Be available for God to use and God to do great things. And realize that you cannot be everywhere. And you cannot be everything. And you cannot have all the knowledge in the world. It's just not possible. You certainly don't have all the power. I do hope and pray that the Word of God has been a blessing to you today. And I hope and pray that wherever you find yourself at, whatever condition you found yourself in today, if God is calling your name, if God is calling you into His family, if He's revealed unto you the need for salvation, I pray that today 
will be the day that your life changes forever. That you'll surrender your heart to the Lord, repent of your sin, believe the gospel, ask Jesus to be Lord and Master of your life, confess him as such. Be baptized, join a local church, and get busy for God. The most important decision that you can ever make in your life is the decision to follow Jesus wholly and fully for the rest of your days. Friends, we love you. God bless you. Thanks for stopping by the creek. Don't forget to tune in to our other show, When He Speaks, hosted by Austin Holcomb. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.